so this evening we have the uh, proposed uh, opening plan for 2021. Uh, uh, the principles of this plan are to keep student and staff safety at the forefront of, of our decision making process to ensure high quality and structured uh, program delivery uh, to best meet the expert uh, government guidelines to gather and consider feedback and to prepare plans that best suit the varied learning and situational needs of our students and families uh, to keep virtual learning at the forefront uh, of teacher planning and we'll talk about why that is in just a second and to communicate regularly about the plan and the expectations for all. The process uh, uh, for getting to where we are today, uh, we certainly had to gather input and feedback. We had surveys, we had focus groups. Um, we, had, we had four different focus groups back in June that uh, brought in on average uh, 100 plus uh, parents and community members uh, across our community. Uh, we provided uh, direction to the staff for planning online instruction. So prior to the end of the school year, we had uh, provided we had provided a framework for delivering online instruction uh, for both uh, the um, uh, for for both uh, the fact and online, and also uh, a framework for delivering uh, instruction online while on premise, uh, so that we get uh, students uh, accustomed to the use of uh, the Google Classroom and other uh, resources. Uh, in, in anticipation for the potential uh, closure at some point later in, in the school year uh, of the upcoming school year. Uh, we had, uh, we, had uh, continue, we continued to review and monitor uh, the guidance from experts. We uh, developed a draft plan. Uh, we created peer, parent, staff, and uh, pandemic uh, 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 team review committees. Uh, had reviewed uh, the, the draft plans with all those uh, groups. Uh, we presented the plan to the board of directors that's, that's here this evening. Uh, we're holding additional parent feedback sessions on Wednesday and Thursday night this week. And uh, we're looking for uh, the, the consideration of the board for approval of the plan next Tuesday, the 28th of July. In terms of guidance, uh, as you can see here, there are about 16, maybe 17 uh, different entities that provided guidance uh, for uh, school districts to consider across uh, some are uh, local, some are uh, you know, nationwide, some are uh, well known, some maybe not so well known. But, but generally speaking, uh, there's guidance that is really all over the place. And what, I, what I mean by that is uh, there, there was not necessarily a consistent uh, designation on things like uh, distance. You know, some organizations said, well, three to six feet is fine. Some said, uh, six feet is is the minimum. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, different uh, opinions uh, and, and I guess uh, science behind all that. I'm not, uh, I'm just telling you that I'm not saying that any of these are right or wrong. I'm just saying that these are a number of different entities that provided guidance. And not only is Mathacting using these types of uh, resources, but uh, school districts across Montgomery County, as well as uh, I'm assuming across the nation, are using some of these same resources. With that said, I think it's important this statement sits on a slide by itself, and I'm just going to read it out loud. It says, everyone should remain mindful that as long as there are cases of COVID-19 in the community, there are no strategies that can completely eliminate transmission risk within a school population. The goal is to keep transmission as low as possible and to safely continue school activities. So just take that into consideration right now. So the plan that I'm sharing with you is not a plan that is designed to ensure uh, the, the safety uh, or the, the uh, absence of uh, a transmission of the, environment, of the virus. Uh, I, I wanna be very clear about that. In terms of the next slide, our plan, given all the guidance, and this is months worth of, worth of guidance. And, and just so you've seen those entities in a previous slide, not only was, were, were there changes uh, among different entities, but even within those entities themselves, their guidance had changed over a period of time. Given the governor's orders and specifically uh, the order on face coverings and the order that, that basically that says that we can safely reopen on premise schooling during the yellow and green phases. These are two things that are generally uh, the premise for which we are talking about 
in, in terms of uh, bringing students back to school on premises uh, as, as the plan will, will uh, dictate here in just a few minutes. But based on those two things uh, that, that we can safely, that, that, that somewhere in the science and all the guidance says that we can safely reopen if we do these things. And B, that and if you're going to do this, the only rule is that you need to have face coverings. All the other information is guidance or best guidance or best practice. The next item we, uh, given the uh, parent and guardian staff feedback, uh, had two meetings in the last two days uh, with uh, our, our staff. Uh, got a lot of good feedback. In fact, um, I just want to make everyone on this call aware that as a result of the meeting on Monday uh, and the feedback that I received from staff, I updated the plan. I posted it on the website and updated the plan uh, regarding the, the use of face coverings. And I'll go over that section and how it changed from earlier in the week. But I, I want you to know that the feedback from staff, uh, I made changes on face coverings. So I want to I want to just I'll bring that to a point when I get there. Um, but it's it's on the district website. The update is there, um, and the and it's updated on the agenda here for this evening. And so, given what we know at this point, and based on the governor's pandemic color phases, the red, yellow, and green. When in red, all students will be on the fact and online. So an online program for all students in the fact. When in yellow and green, uh, there is parent choice. So the plan is to. Is, and my recommendation is to have on-premise five days per week or to do online five days per week. So we call it on-premises or in the fact that online. When we talk about those options, uh, we talk about on-premise, we're talking about a traditional instructional uh, programming with modifications. So when I say modifications, they're really modifications for the operation of the day and some of them are actually modifications of the curriculum. And just real quick, the modification of the curriculum as an example would be physical education. So for physical education, instead of playing as an example, um, a, a game of five on five basketball where there might be physical contact, the phys physical education department would create a, uh, an alternative activity uh, that students would not be uh, participating in that in that activity where they would have physical contact with one another. And, and that goes with uh, other um, curricular areas, and including uh, the music department, including uh, a number of other uh, areas. So we'll talk about that in just a, a few minutes as we uh, pro progress. But, but the on-premise plan, the plan that uh, PDE has suggested that we as a school board approve and must approve prior to allowing students to return to on-premises is what is, what is uh, primarily the conversation for this evening. However, um, and, and, and that plan is uh, organized uh, based on the template that PDE provided us, but organized in a way that uh, addresses the five high level matters on the return plan. And that is symptom screening. And what do we do if someone does, uh, you know, present themselves with symptoms or uh, does uh, test positive? The second one is social distancing. So how are we, uh, you know, dealing with the social distancing of students uh, at every grade level uh, while sitting in class, et cetera? Then the next item is face coverings. Uh, that speaks for itself. Uh, cleaning, sanitation, and disinfection. Um, there's a, a whole section on, on how we will deal with some of those matters. And lastly, communications. When we talk about this, this, the alternative option to uh, the, the on-premises uh, um, option, uh, we also have Methacton Online. And really this is an online instructional program that features a blend of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. And, and I will just stop here and say that needs to be clear to this board as well as it was made clear to our teaching staff that this is not the same online program that we provided uh, between March and June of this past year. I just want to be clear on that. Um, I think our teachers, our parents, uh, our administration, I, I'm sure members of the board can concur that 
while uh, we put a very good effort forward, um, it is that that effort in its totality uh, was not the the best effort that Nathaxon, uh could do, uh, and certainly not the type of uh, programming that we want to provide if we have to provide online uh, instruction starting day one of a new school year. So with that said, uh, we developed the uh, framework for uh, online instruction. We created a number of, uh, we call them MIAC, but they're basically professional development activities uh, within the, uh, within the, the, the summer uh, for teachers to take advantage of. Um, and uh, we're working hard to make this a, a, a better uh, uh, a scenario for our students, for our families, and for our staff. So the blend of synchronous and asynchronous instruction, live synchronous instruction via online meeting platform, as an example, Zoom, consistent daily routines. So the synchronous part and the daily routine, routines was a, a, a re reoccurring theme uh, by our parents in, in, in the, uh, the feedback and surveys that we uh, received back. So we, we're addressing that. Uh, we can anticipate that uh, Methacton Online will be uh, driven by the same type of schedule that you might see in, in the brick and mortar. Uh, certainly students won't be worried about passing uh, in, in between classes. They won't be worried about, you know, the time was allotted for lunch or study hall or anything of, of that nature. Uh, but if there's 60 minutes a day for English, there's 60 minutes a day online for English. If there's a 45 minute period for science, there's a 45 minute for science online. There's a mix of, there'll be a mix of a whole class, small group and individual connections made. Uh, we'll be leveraging the, the use of our, our support uh, uh, staff in terms of our instructional aids uh, to help with that process. Um, we'll also uh, provide uh, instru uh, planned instruction and delivered and supported by our Methacton staff. So when we, when we originally looked at, uh, I'm just gonna stop for, for a second, we're gonna go back to, to the presentation. Uh, but when we originally looked at the roadmap, and, and that was the first presentation that we, that we put up early on, uh, probably late June, early July, that basically said, these are all the things that we need to look at. And we said, uh, there are some scenarios out there. There is the on-premise scenario where we, we bring all the students back. There is the all online scscenario where we're talking about today and the fact that online. Uh, but there's also this we also recognize that there might be a hybrid of that. So where uh, uh, students might come certain days out of the week where they rotate like in an AB type schedule and they would uh, sometimes be on campus and sometimes be uh, online. So in, in our original discussion, we considered that, that all this information, uh, not only from uh, the experts on health and safety, but on the best possible education delivery options moving forward. And, uh, you know, in conversations with uh, other Montgomery County superintendents, uh, in conversations with our administrative team, in conversations uh, with our parents on, on what would be best for the family makeup and uh, for, the, for their children, we, we looked at a, at a number of, of things. And so we know that we, or, um, we know that for, uh, for those families that uh, want the traditional experience and are comfortable with the health and safety modification that we are gonna put in place, uh, the on-premise plan serves that family best. We also recognize early on that there were likely going to be families that um, we, uh, or that, didn't, that, that didn't care what modifications to safety and health that we did uh, they were just not going to send their children to the school based on uh, the, the fear and the concerns associated with uh, COVID-19 and the uncertainty of COVID-19. And we consider that an online option for these families as the best and frankly, the only option. So after recognizing the inherent challenges of both um, uh, the on-premise and online, uh, independent of one another, uh, including the health and safety modifications, the teacher training, the teacher planning, the scheduling of students, the scheduling of staff, class size constraints, upholding the uh, collective bargaining agreements, uh, access to resources, both online and on-premise, uh, staffing, and, and really the, the list goes on. And knowing that we had to provide a choice for our families, considering all that we know about the health and safety and the emotional aspects of all of this. Uh, throwing in a hybrid option not only would make these challenges exceptionally or exponentially greater, 
uh, but would uh, stretch the district so thin that uh, no offering would be at its best. So when we, when we looked at this, uh, based on health and safety guidance, the input from the survey, the focus groups, the sessions uh, with parents, uh, positive uh, benefits uh, to consistent daily routines, uh, the difficulty in planning and the economic and uh, family barriers and benefits, the options uh, to attend five days a week on premise or five days a week in the fact online to serve our students and families the best. So um, in terms of, just bear with me to get back into the presentation. So in terms of the, these options, when we look at these a little bit uh, deeper, the on-premise options, uh, when we talk about symptom screening, social uh, distancing, we're talking about daily symptom screening required for all students and staff. And I'm sure there's a lot of com uh, uh, comments out there on social media and all, all different places about, you know, schools should uh, be, be screening uh, students as they walk through the door or screening the staff as they walk through the door. Uh, the reality of all that is that's not a practical uh, or, or a worthwhile uh, application. Uh, so, for example, you know, on our pandemic uh, response team, uh, we have two nurses, uh, district nurses on, on that team. And, uh, you know, having, putting them in charge of trying to scan, uh, uh, do temperatures for all staff and students uh, as they enter the building, uh, A, is, is not helpful because the, the, uh, the symptom of, 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 uh, of uh, a raised temperature doesn't necessarily mean you have other symptoms or you're even anywhere near uh, being uh, uh, considered uh, in jeopardy of having COVID-19. So it doesn't necessarily uh, equate on a, on, a, on a good percentage basis. Again, that's, that's information that I'm receiving from our, our health professionals. Uh, we also know that, um, you know, we also under symptom screening, we wanna remember this phase, if I feel ill, I stay home. And that's really the, the, the mantra that we have to uh, uh, take on this school year, not only for families and students, but also for our staff. And in fact, uh, you know, you know, Mr. Regina and I are trying to work on uh, a number of uh, options that staff have in, in the event that uh, unfortunately they have to quarantine for 14 days. And so what does that mean? Um, so we had a lot of conversations about that in these last two days with, with my staff calls. So yes, we need to address that. And yes, we need to provide flexible attendance for our students and, uh, and, and some options for our staff to uh, be able to maintain and, and manage those particular matters. And obviously Montgomery County Department of uh, Health uh, Exclusion Guide, and we'll show you that in just a, a few seconds. Uh, social distancing, we talk about the learning spaces, about food, transportation, arrival, and uh, student services, uh, face coverings. So based on the governor's orders, all students and our staff were required to wear uh, face masks or face coverings at all times. And the part that really changed uh, in, in the last day or so was the conversation with uh, the staff and really these last three words, at all times. So what that means is um, in some of the original uh, release of, of the draft, um, it wasn't clear as to whether or not when and if students could remove their masks. Teachers recognize that there's probably going to be times when a student has a water bottle and they need to take a drink of water. They're gonna to have to you know, lift their mask up or do something uh, to, uh, to remove their mask so that they can take a drink. They also recognize if, if someone needs to, to blow their nose or to do certain activities that without, with the mask on will make it uh, impossible for them to, uh, to uh, complete. So with that said, uh, it's, it's my recommendation as part of this plan that we require uh, the face coverings at all times um, and that uh, allow teachers knowing that that has to be, that is the rule of the district uh, to work with their students as they do with all sorts of different uh, individual student issues within, within a given uh, class period or a, a given day to work with the students to manage those things on a case by case basis if a, if a, if a mask just temporarily needs to be removed. So there's been some re a removal of language and, and adding of language in the plan. In terms of uh, cleaning and sanitation, this is uh, all part of our enhanced uh, personal and, and building uh, routine. So we'll talk a little bit about that and the plan outlines some of that in, in the, the overall document. And certainly communication, making sure that uh, we stay uh, current with our parent and guardians and uh, make sure that we're 
addressing uh, the educational signs and symptoms of COVID-19. In terms of a greater look at face coverings, uh, this is pulled right out of the plan. I'm not going to necessarily go into uh, a whole lot of detail here, uh, but this is stuff that, uh, that you can read. But again, uh, it talks about when you need uh, to be wearing a face mask. That's when you're boarding the bus, uh, when, you're, when you're entering the building, when you're in the hallways. You know, it's just about every time uh, other than uh, when you're eating or drinking in a space six feet apart and uh, when you're outdoors uh, and you can cre create a distance of, of six feet for, for individuals. In terms of distancing, uh, there, there are, th we have a target of, of all the uh, desks in terms of, of distancing within uh, each classroom. Uh, our target is to be six by five, which is six feet from left to right on center and five feet uh, on center from front to back. Uh, we do, however, have uh, a number of spaces uh, that will be uh, five by five on center, as well as spaces that will be six by six on center. These, these measurements are the best that we can do. And what that means is it's the, it's the best that we can do in terms of having, providing a feasible operation. Uh, so for example, it means that in all of these instances, if there were once 30 student desks in a classroom, there are no longer 30 student desks in a classroom. There are more like 24 desks in a classroom, 18 desks in a classroom. Uh, we, have, we have some rooms that have only 17. So with that said, um, the plan as it was highlighted in yellow will have uh, numbers for all of our classrooms so that, that parents and, and the board and everyone knows what we're trying to and what we're capable uh, of doing within the structure of this targeted uh, uh, distancing within the classrooms. In terms of classroom design, it should be known that these will be traditional rows and columns of desks. Uh, there's a lot of different configurations that we commonly use uh, within the on-premises instructional process. We have, to, we have to change and move all of our uh, uh, desks in the same direction and uh, use staggered or di diagonal seating when, when, when required. Elementary students will remain in their home room for the majority of the school day. When I say elementary, I mean K through six. That includes all ele elementary schools and Skyview. So they will ride the bus if they decide to ride the bus. They will enter the school in a staggered uh, uh, format off the bus. They will enter their, their, their classrooms and predominantly be in their homeroom. And teachers will rotate uh, through those homerooms uh, to provide specials or other related uh, services. In terms of secondary students, uh, secondary students, because of the way the schedule works and the, and the need for uh, uh, the flexible programming, uh, students will travel from class to class with staggered transition and additional time allotted uh, between, uh, 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 between the bell schedule to allow for a reduced volume of students uh, to pass between classes in the hallway. So students will, will travel in grades seven through 12 and adults will travel in grades K through six. In terms of symptom screening, uh, daily, we, we will be creating a chart that outlines uh, what we're asking of our staff and our, student, and our parents and students to do. Uh, we're hoping to make that a magnet so that we can have it put on as recommended, put it on the, uh, on the refrigerator at home or some other predominant place that uh, we can do those checks on a daily basis. And that if we are uh, feeling ill, that we stay home. Um, again, if a student, staff member, or a central visitor uh, tests positive for COVID-19 after being on campus or presents at school with flu-like or COVID-like symptom, that individual will be sent home and be required to secure a COVID-19 test or medical clearance prior to returning to school or work. There's a little bit more detail around that uh, in, in the next plan. This next plan outlines uh, from the Montgomery County uh, Office of Public Health uh, the actual steps that we will take. This is posted up to the district website. It was referenced in the plan that was released last uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of that uh, but, but this is the plan that, that we will follow. In terms of cleaning, sanitation, and disinfection, um, I know the, the, the text here is rather small, so I apologize. Um, but uh, on just a high level, 
We're talking about uh, cleaning the classrooms, uh, disinfecting the classrooms between the AM and PM kindergarten sessions. Um, we are uh, equipping all classrooms, both on the elementary level and the secondary level, uh, with uh, disinfectant uh, spray, wipes, and other uh, PPE uh, uh, equipment in order to uh, manage uh, the routines for doing uh, and having, uh, having our staff. And this will be our teaching staff will help, as well as our custodial staff will help in uh, doing some of the disinfecting on, on, a, on, a, on a scheduled basis. So as an example, we would ask that our, our teachers uh, in the secondary level, uh, when a class dismisses, uh, they'll have a spray bottle with a CDC uh, uh, acceptable uh, uh, spray inside the, the bottle uh, to spray both the, the tabletops, the, the, uh, the seats and, and the backs uh, and, and allow that to uh, you know, do it, take its course for the next uh, three minutes as, as, as it's prescribed on the, on the uh, instructions. Uh, again, those, uh, those chemicals are, uh, are, are CDC safe for the use around humans and, and certainly uh, we're not using things that uh, will, will not be, or that would be harmful uh, to the students or adults. In terms of communications, uh, we've uh, outlined uh, a program uh, to have signs and, and symptoms of COVID-19 and educate everyone on that particular process so that as soon as we can identify that and identify that well, keeping kids out and keeping adults out of the school uh, is, is one of the best uh, solutions. Uh, the district will notify families if closing of a classroom, school, or a district is recommended by the Montgomery County Department of Health. Uh, for reasons so determined, but we will not be sharing uh, uh, personal information. And the district will continue to review all the health guidance and uh, based on, on a national, state, and county level as we continue going forward. In terms of uh, briefly Methacton Online, uh, we, we released uh, the Methacton Online communication uh, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, it addresses three main areas. Uh, it, it addresses instruction, assessment, and social emotional learning. Uh, we, we said earlier it'll have common, consistent routines, uh, the same effect in curriculum as our brick and mortar, along with the, the same resources. Google Classroom uh, will be used with a focus on synchronous instruction, live and recorded lessons by Methacton teachers with some content from third parties, and uh, instruction via our district approved resources. And uh, I wanna make some clarification on this last statement here. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of uh, questions that came into our, um, uh, our, uh, our uh, Methacton Online uh, question box uh, email account. Uh, but what we're, what we're asking parents to do is if they're looking to do Methacton Online, that they would make a commitment for a semester. And, and generally what that means in, in, a, in a, a regular semester in most of our schools, it would generally be from September through, uh, through January. However, um, you know, using the word semester, because we're going to a trimester in the elementary schools, um, it, it wouldn't necessarily be on the trimester at the elementary level. Uh, but more along the lines of the commitment being for a, a period between September and January. Now, the, the challenge with all that is, and we get, we're getting a lot of questions about, well, if I sign up for Methacton Online, can I uh, go back to uh, on-premises? Or when I, if I sign up for on-premises, can I go to Methacton Online and back and forth? The, the truth of the matter is, uh, we want to be here for all of our parents. I mean, we consider our, our parents and our students our customers, and we need to make sure that we treat all of them uh, in the best way that, that services our, our students and our families in the district. This is a definitely an emotional time. It's definitely a challenging time. And I, I want to say that we'll do all that we can to help uh, with these transitions. But I must tell you that it's not going to be perfect in terms of moving back and forth between online and on-premises. And all I want to tell you about that is um, if, if you're making the switch and you need to make the switch and you, you're, you're asking for that, we'll work with you, but please be aware that you may not be able to get all the exact same things that you had online on-premises or on-premises online. Uh, once the schedule is set and we put staff in particular uh, places, it's going to be very challenging for us to create a class for one child and, and, and do certain things like that. We just don't necessarily have that flexibility. 
um, as, as, you, as you, might, you know, might imagine. So the reason that we're asking for a commitment uh, is, is that allows us to uh, make the commitment to our, our, our teachers and have them commit to planning and delivering instruction and keeping consistent with uh, the delivery of our overall curriculum. For you to bounce back and forth, or for a student to bounce back and forth between the two uh, modes of, of uh, instructional delivery uh, will put you out of sync uh, to a great degree uh, uh, in, in that process, potentially, maybe not. Uh, but, but generally speaking, we're asking for parents to commit for one semester. And additionally, in terms of the fact that online, uh, students will be issued benchmark assessments. And this is actually true for both online and on-premises. Uh, we recognize that uh, we need to catch up uh, with some of the, 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 the missed opportunities from these last couple months of, of last school year. And so with that said, we really need to gauge where, where the starting point is so that we can move uh, a student, grow the student forward based on, uh, based on where they are when they, when they either you know, join us online on August 31st or join us in a building on August 31st. The grades will be issued using the same grading scale. So I want to be clear uh, for those considering the fact that online, uh, you know, we, we made uh, a decision to do pass fail in a number of grades. Uh, we've also, based on some of the rules that were uh, handed down from the federal government, had to make adjustments uh, for potential failures uh, in the 7 through 12 level as well. What that, what that means, uh, and, um, and absent of any new rules from the federal government or something that comes from the state, I want to make sure that the board knows, as well as our parents know, and certainly I've been telling our staff this, that absent of any new rules, uh, we will be grading students online the same way we will be grading students on premises, and we'll be grading both of them the same way that we've graded them prior to the COVID-19 matters. Students will be issued uh, textbooks and resources, uh, uh, the same as if they were attending on premises. Uh, students in grades three through 12 will be issued uh, their own Chromebook. So just a, a matter of note, uh, we received a grant of uh, 200 and, I'm gonna say 238 or $228,000 that allowed us to uh, purchase Chromebooks for grades three through six in order to uh, address some of the uh, uh, resource uh, challenge at that level and the potential sharing challenge at that level. Uh, so that would mean starting August 31st, uh, students in grades three through 12, whether you're on premises or online, you will be issued a, a, a district uh, Chromebook. Um, and then we also purchased additional uh, Chrome devices uh, for other grades in K1 and 2. Uh, students can participate in the school events and activities as per the regulations, meaning uh, when I say regulations, I'm talking about uh, if we can have uh, participation uh, in a particular activity. Uh, not all activities might be available. That means clubs as well, uh, because, uh, we, because of what the club does and how they, they operate. Um, we, we, we have to review all that. That, is, that has not been completed uh, just yet. Uh, counselors, nurses, administrators will be available to support uh, students and families. Workshops for parents on Google Classroom and related tools will be offered. Uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, scheduling the teacher interviews for the fact that online teachers. Uh, so what we did, just to give everybody an understanding, is we put an ad internally out to see what teachers in, in various certifications, from elementary certification to middle level certification to uh, secondary certification in, in specific areas like social studies, science, math, etc. We're looking for those interested in uh, being the fact that online teachers and we are working with uh, Dr. Harmer who I, I've, uh, I've put in charge of the, as the principal for uh, the fact that online. Uh, he's, he is also our uh, uh, Eagleville Elementary principal. Uh, but Dr. Harmer brings uh, some experience from uh, his pro former work uh, prior to joining us in a, a cyber charter school. So with that said, uh, Dr. Harmer is working with uh, Mr. Regina in HR uh, to schedule interviews and to conduct uh, and get the best teachers uh, for those uh, needed positions. And right now, I, I can tell you that we don't know exactly how many teachers we need. We can't tell you right now exactly how many teachers we need for specific subject areas or for, or, or for specific grade levels. While we are receiving uh, uh, 
registrations uh, through uh, Ford Methacton online. Um, we, we, we certainly know the deadlines aren't here yet, and we certainly know that um, uh, there's, there's still time for people to consider. And part of the consideration, uh, I believe, from the feedback that I received is knowing what the on-premises plan looks like, uh, because if that's, uh, you know, something that uh, families or students are, are comfortable with, then they can choose to go on-premises. If they're not comfortable with what we're sharing, uh, they can then have a better understanding that maybe their only option is uh, online. And the last item, I just want to make sure that uh, I note this as an update, uh, but uh, we are adjusting the timeline for the 9-12 uh, uh, deadline. So I believe it might have been the 26th or 27th, I forget exactly what it was, but uh, we are moving the deadline for 9-12 through 12 registration for the fact online to the 29th. Uh, that is challenging us in terms of finalizing our schedule, uh, but uh, if, if you are a, a family that it believes that Methacton Online is the best option for you uh, for this first semester, I would, I would highly recommend you uh, sign up for that now. Um, the sooner you do that, our, our, uh, the people that do the scheduling are working on developing the schedule and making uh, the accommodations now. Uh, that doesn't mean that you, you can't get your, uh, your completed schedule if you wait for the 29th, but I will tell you that uh, the sooner you get it in, the better opportunity you do have. And then for the rest of the students in K through 8, uh, we are recommending that uh, they register no later than August 5th. Next, uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Spiewak if you wouldn't be so kind to just share. We, we have two slides on uh, the return to sports and considerations. Again, uh, when Dr. Sp Dr. Spiewak's not going to go through his whole plan, nor have I gone through my whole plan. Those are posted to this agenda. Uh, our goal is to really answer some questions on the stuff that has already been posted for a period of time. So, Dr. Spiewak, I'll turn the mic over to you. Thank you, Dr. Zerby, and thank you, uh, members of the school board. Uh, the PIAA, which is our governing body for the state of Pennsylvania and athletics, uh, announced last week that at this time, uh, the plan is uh, still on track to begin with no changes to dates. Obviously, this is fluid and can change, and uh, the athletic directors in the Pioneer Athletic Conference have been meeting uh, weekly, sometimes multiple times per week, and in constant communication for changes as they take place, not only in, in Pennsylvania, but as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, throughout the country, uh, states are, are treating athletics and activities very differently at this time. In terms of our return to sports plan, uh, some aspects of the plan that uh, for your consideration, um, plan is intended to begin on August 17th. That is the official start of fall sports. Uh, football would begin their heat acclimation on August 10th. And again, that's consistent across the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, for Methacton's plan, we would have no, we would not have athletics take place in the red or yellow phase. So this plan is assuming that that we are in the green at a minimum, uh, which is exactly how we have been operating throughout our summer voluntary workout plan for fall athletics and the Methacton marching band. Um, students and staff will undergo the COVID-19 health screening uh, prior to any practice or event or team meeting that does not immediately follow a day of in-building schooling. So if they go home because they don't have a last period class or because they are participating in Methacton online uh, or for whatever reason they're attending, uh, maybe it's a night practice or a night game, then they would need to utilize the same uh, COVID-19 survey uh, Google Doc that they've been utilizing for the, uh, for the summer workout plans. Uh, at this time, and this is a, a major point of, of discussion amongst not only the Pioneer Athletic Conference, but District 1 and the PIAA, but at this time, uh, no spectators will be allowed inside of the playing facility for both practices or events. Um, and again, that is fluid, but as the plan sits right now, that is the decision uh, that we are making for Methacton. In terms of uh, face coverings, uh, there is an exception for athletics with regards to face coverings while in the act of competition, uh, but all staff will be required to wear face coverings at all times. Athletes will be required to wear face coverings when they are not 
uh, when they're able to, when appropriate. And what that means is if they're, if they're on the sideline, uh, if they're moving to and from the event uh, and they are not actually participating at that moment, then having and wearing a face covering is mandatory. But as they are participating in the event, uh, it is not required. Social distancing must be practiced when possible, very similar to uh, requiring face coverings. Obviously, if they're participating in a field hockey, soccer, football uh, event, et cetera, uh, that would obviously not require social distancing and could not require social distancing within those sports. The idea of this protocol is not to change the actual sport, but to just make sure that we're creating an environment where we can put in safety measures to allow for the environment to be as safe as possible around the playing of that particular sport. If a student uh, or staff member, similar to the return to school uh, protocol, if a student or staff member or referee or anyone that is involved in an athletic event or the Methacton marching band on premise, uh, they would be immediately removed and quarantined until uh, travel arrangements uh, can be made. In order for students and staff to return from quarantine, uh, they must have medical clearance. This is the exact same protocol that we're using for our summer workouts. They would have to have clearance from a, from a physician, a medical professional, which would be provided then to our school district athletic trainer. Uh, and then our athletic trainer would be the one to then um, allow for that student or students to, uh, to be implemented back into athletics after the quarantine. Thank you, Dr. Spivak. Uh, and just, uh, we'll need you to remain on the call until after such time that we uh, take questions from the board. So just stay with us, please. Um, so in terms of uh, communications of, the, of our overall plan, uh, we held focus group sessions. Uh, you can read what it, what it has here, but we did create uh, a roadmap uh, to reopening the fact in school section of the website. So all the communications that I've sent out, all the plans, all the draft plans, the fact online, all that's there. So I just recommend that uh, you know members of the public and, and everyone just can keep going there for updates. Now, uh, the one thing we are working on, and we have a number of uh, questions through the emails that we uh, 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 created specifically for the fact online and specifically for the reopening plan. Uh, but we're creating a frequently uh, asked questions section. Uh, we've updated that once. Uh, I have a number of questions in, in front of me in, in terms of emails that I got to get through, but uh, in the next couple of days, we'll have some updates on that as well. Um, in terms of driver education plan, I, uh, I just want you to know that uh, basically uh, we're, we're working uh, to ensure that uh, the safety of our, our uh, staff members and the safety of our students are, are of the utmost. Uh, there are a number of steps here that are, that are required, similar to uh, what Dr. Spivak had mentioned about uh, if students or instruction, instructors uh, who contact COVID-19 and what needs to happen. So again, uh, the plan that's attached to the agenda and the outline here is, is really similar to that that was approved by the North Monco Technical Career Center. Uh, and uh, we, we, if there's any questions about that, we certainly can take uh, questions on that. Uh, so in terms of board approval, uh, I, I have a, a number of four things here that, that the the, the bottom three are ones that actual the board has to approve uh, uh, in order for us to a uh, open on premise. So if you if you do not approve the health and safety plan, uh, we cannot open schools and let students come on premises. Again, if you don't approve the health and safety plan for athletics and activities, uh, we're not going to be able to uh, operate uh, athletics and activities. Uh, starting at the starting point for which uh, the, 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 the season starts here in, in, in August. And lastly, uh, the same for driver education. Uh, so as, as you know, in, in terms of driver education, students pay an additional uh, amount to do on the road instruction. And uh, those, uh, those teachers are, you know, you know schedule those times, uh, you know, during the summer. So we've missed, we've missed uh, June and July and, and obviously the other months uh, during the school year, but we missed June and July for those on the road uh, trainings. Uh, if, if, you're, if it's acceptable, we'd like to get started in early August. And the last, and the last thing, the first one is really uh, the educational delivery options. Uh, again, I, I brought before you what I think is, uh, are the two best options uh, in consideration of all that we have before us. 
uh, where we're providing uh, uh, what I'll call the, uh, the ultra safe environment in terms of the fact that online. And then we, we, we provide the environment that allows for the traditional delivery of instruction uh, based on the governor's uh, uh, orders for masks and the governor's uh, order to say schools can reopen on premises with if you follow these guidelines uh, where, where feasible. So with that said, um, we're going to take some questions from members of the board. 